Christ Church at the Grove. I am so happy, amen, to be here this morning. How many of you prayed as Sister Wanda and I were on our vacation, prayed for us? Amen. Did you pray that we would come back safe? Amen. We're back safe. Did you pray that Pastor Ben's back would be fine on the trip? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm back is fine. Folks, did any of you pray that we would be refreshed? Renewed? Revived? Did anyone, you can, any of those words, did any of you kind of recollect? Because I'm, I'm thankful for all the prayers. But whoever prayed for that, amen, I want you to know that God has answered. Hallelujah. <laughs> Folks, there's so much going on. Good spiritual things going on. Revival is for those who already know him. When we are revived, we can anticipate God moving greater in us and through us to the point that others are affected. And revival tends to bring an in-gathering. It does. Folks, when we left a week and a half ago, we were in winter. May not have felt like it, but if you looked on the calendar, we were in winter. Folks, winter is when our environment locally, because we have the four seasons, uh, hibernates. It is resting up. It is resting up in such a way that at times you can look at some of the vegetation and think, man, is that dead? <laughs> is that going to live again? And the good news is we are now in spring. And if you'll take the time to notice, things are reviving all around us. Hallelujah. Letting us know that they are ready for a new season of bloom, of beauty, of fragrance, of life. I'm so excited about the uh, 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 God Loves You tour. That's the Billy Graham, Franklin Graham. Uh, event that's happening, Fair Hill Grounds, that's where it's going to happen uh, uh, on May, beginning of May. And uh, yesterday we had a first uh, a training, for the, uh, and some of you were there. It was awesome to see you. Hallelujah. I was excited. The ladies had to leave right on time when that one finished to get over here for their planning session, I hear, for the upcoming year, ladies' ministry. and um, And then some of us were able to uh, spend two hours. Someone told me it was actually two hours and 16 minutes <laughs> of worship with our brothers and sisters in this community led by a younger set of Christians. I'm so thankful for a new generation. Amen. Until Jesus Christ comes back, there ought to be a new generation. Hallelujah. And there is no junior Holy Ghost. There's just the Holy Spirit. It ain't no miniature version for the young people. Amen. We all ought to be enthused. Revived. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray, you guys. And as we worship, however you worship best, whether it's a, a little more demonstrative or a little less demonstrative, because, folks, God's looking at your heart anyway. But some of us have a history of being a little bit more, and some of us have a history of being a little bit less. Uh, somebody told me those of us that talk all the time ought to try silence before God, and those of us that are silent before God all the time ought to try to talk up. 
today's a good day, you guys, to just say, oh, Lord, whatever you want. Try it. You'll like it. Amen, Mikey said. Hallelujah. Precious Lord, what a privilege. My God, thank you, Lord, for being faithful, Lord, in nature and in the spirit realm. Lord, if we will hunger and thirst, we will be filled. Lord, there's not a one of us, dear God, that have reached the bottom of your love, patience, mercy, grace, knowledge, experience. Lord, we have barely scratched the surface, oh God. Lord, may we desire to know you better today. Lord, may this not just be another service, another Sunday. But, oh God, may we meet with you in such a way, Lord, that you impact us. Lord, that we leave a smile on your face as we praise you. Whether it be out loud, whether it be standing, sitting, clapping our hands, raising our arms, folding our hands in, in a prayer posture. Uh, uh, Lord, however, Lord, let it be genuine and let it be pleasing to you. God, perfect our praise in this place today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
bless your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. You guys, I want to real quickly, uh, before I start projecting forward, uh, give thanks uh, to our elders, to our board, uh, to our ministry leaders, and uh, to all of our saints for handling yourself so well in our absence. Uh, particular, I would just like to say thank you to Justin for bringing God's word last week. Amen. How many of you learned a thing or two about Jonah? Yeah. Amen. And also to Gabe. Amen for helping us out. Right. Gabe, how old are you? Gabe? Gabe. 15. Folks, I was 16 when on my own, no family, I came seeking God. The church where we were at yesterday with those at lampstand. Couldn't help but keep glancing into the kitchen and thinking I was baptized in there. All right, because they had a fire and reconfigured the whole church. But where the kitchen is now is where I was baptized as a 16-year-old. Robbie, we were that, you know, like that. <laughs> Amen. It just thrills me to see our young people being involved. Amen. So I thank them. Uh, I want to say thank you to Janie for coordinating uh, through the, uh, you know, board and whatnot, but uh, through her workplace. She had, they, you know, they have volunteers, community volunteers. Well, one of the gentlemen, uh, she hooked it all up. He came and he took the registers out of the bathrooms that are no longer functional. You know, they seat registers. So there's like a, a bare space. We'll take care of that. Um, and also in the fellowship hall, the re those registers. But that's a good bit of labor, and it cost us nothing. Amen. So, Jane, thank you, and thanks, Scott, right, for helping us out with that. Um, with that, let me move into some things that are upcoming, all right, that you want to be fully aware of. Number one, you guys, God has voted for life one more time in the form of a blessing upon Luke and Carrie Moline. In that, uh, Carrie gave birth. She has a daughter, Kira. Carrie already has Kira. And now Carrie and Kira have Kaylee. <laughs> Kaylee May Moline was born on 317 at 7 pounds, 13 ounces, and 20 and a half inch uh, tall. And folks, what can we say but thank you, Lord, and glory to God. Amen. So uh, if you know them, feel free to reach out to them. I want to uh, acknowledge that Moise is going to come here in just a bit and share God's word with us. Uh, you guys, please note that we will be joining with Kimballsville uh, Methodist Church that's meeting upstairs right now uh, in a sunrise service at 6.30 a.m. And we mean it. We're going to start at 6.30. All right. And the service isn't a real long one. But it's a meaningful one as we watch the sun rise. Amen. Folks, how many of you know what First John, I mean, excuse me, John 3.16 says? Something about for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's good. Right? Somebody tell me what First John 3.16 says. I'm going to be impressed, even if Andy can come up with it. Because he'll, he'll know it when I start. But he's never thought of it as maybe 1 John 3.16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters. That's 1 John 3.16. Uh, folks, let us focus. I know that we've been, uh, we've been real busy. We just came vacation. Um, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. The Sunday after that will be Easter Sunday. I like to refer to it as Resurrection Sunday. And um, it is, a, it is uh, someone called it the hinge. That everything about Christ hinges on the fact of his resurrection. Not his miracles and his great teaching. But on his resurrection. So you guys, not only will we celebrate as believers, but uh, non-believers will at least acknowledge. You know, 
a, a holiday of some kind. Uh, it may be a great time to invite some of your friends and family that are on the fringe and say, hey, join us as we celebrate appropriately Resurrection Day by worshiping Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, but we will have a 6.30 on that Sunday for those. Are, and there will be like um, a light breakfast, what I'm referring to as snacks almost afterwards. Okay? There's a sign-up sheet. It's like finger foods almost. Granola bars, hard-boiled eggs. Is, we're going to, you know, along with Kimballsville. Folks, and they're an older congregation. I want us to support them. They, they, they enjoy doing stuff around us and with us. So um, make an effort. I know it's earlier. You'll be all right. You'll survive. Uh, the God Loves You Tour. And next week I will emphasize that more and we've got some materials. But please note the date at least of the actual event. It will be a happening. They, they, they expect three to 5,000 people uh, out there at Fair Hill Grounds in Elkton. And, um, you know, again, some of these names may not mean much. Franklin Graham is the speaker. He's the son of Billy Graham. Though some young people don't know who that is. Um, Marcos Witt is big time, was big time, uh, especially in, in the Hispanic world for his worship music. He'll be there. Newsboys. I think they should be called newsmen by now, but <laughs> uh, they, they, they will be ministering. You guys, it's going to be a great time. And um, today, after our service, and this is going to be one of these bang, bang, bang kind of, you know, we're going to be rocking and rolling, moving along schedule-wise, but uh, we have a gentleman, Earl, and... Um, uh, he's going to be sharing with us. He does these life support trainings, CPR. Um, um, boy, what's the other ones that uh, go along those lines? Uh, choking. Um, oh, boy, the stuff when you need the pen, the EpiPen. Right, the allergic react, drug overdose. He's going to be talking to us. Because we congregate every week, but not just that, you may need it in your house. You may need it in a store. All righty. If you did not sign up yet, you can still stay. You just don't need as much pizza as the other people. We will provide pizza. Okay? And some tea sandwiches that were left over from yesterday's ladies. They're still fairly fresh. Uh, you can have some of those, all you can eat. <laughs> if you signed up, we, we, we were uh, looking for you to stay. But the gentleman is going to start immediately when we're done. Even if the pizza, which will be delivered to us, isn't quite here, while we're eating, he's going to be instructing us. He means to make the most of every minute so that we can be done definitely on time. Okay, so you'll appreciate that, I'm sure. And folks, I just want to acknowledge, this is why, oh, you want to be Christian at your workplace. Okay, you guys, uh, this training, which does cost, is costing us nothing. Because uh, my wife's employer, and some of you have met her, Ellen Nan, she likes to come on Wednesday night. She really enjoys the Bible study. And um, uh, she's the one who set us up, as in she's covering the cost. So those of you who uh, see her today there, um, you, you can thank her just privately, though, okay? Because you don't want a bunch of attention about it. Hallelujah. Everything else, you guys, is, uh, please note, because there's some stuff in May, I mean May, in April, uh, our spring cleanup day, our anniversary service in the middle of the month. Be aware of these things. Uh, but let's take it a step at a time. Let's get past our training today. <laughs>
Hallelujah. And we're going to pray, and then we'll have Moist come and bring the word of the Lord. Um, you guys, thank you for, for praying for Bill. Amen. Who is able to be here with us today. It's good to see Bill again. Um, you guys, for those who have been praying for Melanie's mom, Elaine, who uh, will be 99 this fall and uh, has had some infections, and, but she's recovering very well at Chester County Hospital right now and should be able to go back to her home at Twin Pines at the beginning of this week, assuming there's no changes. And I rejoice with Elaine. Hallelujah. Okay, well, you guys on the other far end of the spectrum also, we, and, and it's with their permission. Uh, but for that, pray for the Hadzik family. Um, it's in specific for Sophie. All right, and, and Sophie is um, their um, number, two, no, number two daughter from the top. Okay, second oldest. What is Sophie? Be about 16, 17, somewhere in there, unbelievably. But nonetheless, you guys. Uh, um, uh, Sophie will be undergoing a, a surgery, uh, like a biopsy type of surgery. So needless to say, uh, you know, all indications are that it's not serious. But this will confirm it this, uh, on the 3rd of April. And the family desires your faith to join, be joined to their faith. And you can understand, all right? So if you know them personally enough, that you want to reach out, you know, feel free. If you just want to send them a card even, let them know you're praying. Uh, but we're going to pray right now, you guys. And you're going to mention names that are specific to your life. Okay? Because that's right for us to do that. But we're going to collectively uh, pray for Elaine, uh, pray for today's training, pray for Sophie Hadsick and the Hadsick family. All righty? So amen. Jesus, what a privilege. Lord, to come together, Lord, without fear of someone hurting us for proclaiming your name. Uh, Lord, this is evidently a Christ place. And we thank you, Lord, for the use of this facility and how you continue to bless us in so many ways here. Uh, Lord, thank you, not just for our congregation, but Lord, thank you for the... Uh, Christian community, Lord, the people of God, by faith in Jesus Christ throughout our Avon Grove community, uh, Lord, our wonderful gatherings that we had yesterday, Lord, with some of them, and uh, Lord, how you're going to move and bless, dear God, through the God Loves You Tour, uh, Lord, that's coming to our area, Lord, we pray in advance, God, that you would meet with us that day in a very special way, Lord, even as you did in yesterday's training. Uh, Lord, and more importantly, God, that souls, Lord, would come to you, would recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ, would recognize why we celebrate Easter as he laid down his life, and thereby we perceive the love of God for us because he laid down his life for us. Lord, and we ought to be moved, Lord, to lay down our lives for others. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you for touching Bill. Lord, we thank you for touching Elaine. Lord, we pray a continued blessing, oh Lord, upon Elaine of recovery. Uh, Lord, without any further setbacks. Uh, Lord, bless our training today. Uh, Lord, thank you for how you provide. And uh, Lord, we lift up Sophie. Uh, Lord, a uh, young person, a uh, Savior and... Uh, Lord, if we never had any trials, Lord, how could we know that you're trustworthy? But Lord, it is difficult at times. So we pray uh, for Sophie, our heart's desire, Lord, that this biopsy will indicate uh, uh, health and uh, not a more serious condition. Uh, Lord, we, uh, Lord, that's our heart's desire, and we're joining our faith to the Hadzik family, Lord, uh, to that end. Lord, bless Susan. Bless Don. Lord, listen to the cry of your people, Lord, from their hearts, from their lips. Lord, as they call out names and situations, Lord, important to them. God, and we know that if 
we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray that you would have your way, Lord, through the remainder of this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, God. With that, I'm going to dismiss our children's ministry and uh, nursery ministry. Uh, the youth will be staying here today, right, now. Yeah. I get a little confused sometimes myself. All right, God bless the children, their workers. Um, all righty, and with that, I'm going to ask Moist to come forward. Amen. How many of you can say this man's name properly? Moisel. How many of you can say, who can spell it? <laughs> Very good. Now let's do it together. M-O-I-S-C-E-L-L. -L. Moisel. Nice French name. <laughs> and you guys, I just want to acknowledge it is such a, a privilege for me today. And I appreciate Moise, uh, Justin, everyone who, you know, uh, fills in. I appreciate that they sense the, the importance, and Andy and others, that have, the importance of what their, Moise is about to do. To be an instrument of God. To be his mouth for the moment. So um, I appreciate that. I have known Moise since we were about 12, 13, 12 or 13 years old, Robbie. That's when we met. Okay, and um, uh, we've been pretty close ever since. And I'm so thankful for what God has done uh, in Moise's life spiritually. Uh, I can remember a time when I thought he was going to go with the Eastern philosophies. He was drifting in that direction, and I kept my friendship. And uh, Cisco was living, Francisco, you know, Cisco the, <laughs> the Roman was lived with him. Yep. And, and there in the Genoville uh, Trailer Park. Yes. Mm -hmm, Robbie, I remember all that. And I remember that I would go and visit them, and I'd be praying, Oh, God, don't let them keep going that way. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, Hallelujah. I can tell you, this is a Christ-centered man. Aww. Right. God bless. God bless. So, Moise, enjoy yourself as uh, God uses you. Amen. Amen. All right. Can everybody hear me okay here? Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, thank uh, Ben's love for me. Uh, Chipper, you know, they loved on me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be here today without them. They're a part of who I am, and I have this free opportunity found in Christ through them. Because when Ben was 16, I recall going to church with Ben and Chip. But my mind wasn't there. But thank God it is now. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> so uh, I take this with honor, and I thank every one of you who are here today that I have this opportunity to bring something about God that he has laid on my heart. Uh, but before I start, I, I just do a little quick prayer. Put me more in the spirit of God. So just pray with me. But I want each of you to pray for your need. Pray that, that God will be fulfilled, that his purpose, and he uses me as a vessel. So Lord, we come to you, God, because you are just that good. God, you are just that great. God, you are just that awesome. That God, that you would take someone like me, born out of a family of 12, with alcoholism and, and every kind of determinant that turns away from you, but place a, a, a grandmother in my house who was a woman of God, that I would have people that were in my life like Ben and Chip and other people that have just pointed to you, Lord, all along. But ultimately, God, you don't give up on any of us, any part of our life, because you're always with us. So, God, I just want to thank you for watching over me, making me, and teaching me to be a man of God. I pray today for the word that I may bring forth today, that it will be fresh manna, and that it will bring fresh water, that it will bring fresh spirit, and that it will speak to you where God is talking to you, because he talks to each and every one in his own special way. That's how wonderful God is. So God, use me today that I can proclaim what you have put in my heart to profess today for your people. 
So God, we just pray that you take control, that your Holy Spirit would flow, and that the anointing would just be overwhelmed, that the cloud of the Shekinah glory would come in and cover this place. Our Lord, and we just give you the honor and glory found in your Son, in your name, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. When I, uh, when I first got this opportunity, Ben asked me, I, you know, obviously you, you pray about it. He goes, you, you, you want to make sure that you're speaking what God would have you to speak. So I have two parts. I'm not ready yet. And the first part is that got laid on my heart was this month is Women's Month, American Women Appreciation Month. So what I wanted to do is I've got a little information about us, about women in this country that made a difference. And then I have godly women. This is part one of the sermon. (laughs) Excuse me. So hang with me. Part two, I have another part. So first of all, I would say every woman, first of all, God, thank you for making women. Period. We can't do it. You think about our households and and what a woman does. I I want every man, if you're married to your wife, you give her a special hug, you give her special words of love, and you keep doing that every day because they're precious. They are. Women are precious. We, men could not do what women did. God knew what he was doing. Women had, had such an astounding effect on our lives and, on, and throughout history. It's all throughout the Bible. But I'm just going to mention a few women in, in our history that God has used. Uh, and that's why I like, you know, getting this opportunity because, you know, you, you, God works on you when you do this. He really does. He really works on you. So we all know about Paul Revere and his ride and all that stuff. But you know what? There was a a female version of Paul Revere before it was Paul Revere. And this young lady rode in the night to tell about troops that were coming, and and she mustered the troops up. She rode twice as far as Paul Revere, 40 miles. She was only 16 years old. Her father was a general. And they prepared and were ready when the, when the British came. But this, her name was, uh, and they have a stamp for her, named Sybil Loonington. So here's a, a woman that was a pre-Paul Revere, but people don't even know about. God bless her. We obviously, we obviously know about uh, Sojourner Truth, an African-American abolitionist and woman. Woman's right campaigner in 1951 gave a famous uh, speech. Ain't I a woman? Which explain, which explain in plain English that women were looking for equal rights, folks. A lot of times women, even today in this country, aren't treated equally. They're not paid fair in the workplace. There's a distant disparity. They don't want to have them in any forms of management. Uh, they're shunned upon in a lot of circles. And, and thank God America has a platform. But some of these other countries, women can be innocently murdered. They treat animals better than they treat women. So God, you know, I thank you for that. And, and keep be mindful of those types of things. Here's another person that God has used in American history for women. It was Clara Barton. Barton was a pioneer nurse in American Civil War. She overcame stiff opposition to lead medical units close to the front line. She was the founder and president of the American Red Cross. Red Cross Society and spent her life serving others in need. Another act of God, serving her life. We got Rosa Parks an American civil rights activist, Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her bus seat in Montgomery, Alabama, indirectly to lead some of the most significant civil rights legislation of American history. She sought to play down her role in civil rights struggle, but her peaceful and dignified campaigning, she became one of the most well-respected figures in history. And she made a change. Not only parallel with women uh, problems of equal rights, was a problem of, 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 of just African-Americans, people in general having equal rights in this country. So, you know, once again, you know, women spurring change for the better. And then we have, uh, of course, our vice president, Camelia Harris, first African-American woman to become vice president. And women are still have many attributes and things that, that, that they have done throughout history that have attributed to great life changes. There's, there's a lot of women that were scientists, 
that got involved in the design of the DNA and all these things that, and throughout the war that prepared and, and, and did things in the war when we were in battle that would make things and, and, and patch troops and do things that we didn't even did we understand. So I just wanted to give them, but that is women. Oh, one more. Sandra Day O'Connor was the first Supreme Court. She was a woman that served on the Supreme Court. Okay, now I'm going to shift from those women to I just want to mention a few godly women. You know, often in the Bible, majority of the Bible is thought about men. It is. But in the background, working is always a woman. Right? She is. She's working. <laughs> without, without Sarah, you know, there would have been no nation. You know, all these things. Obviously, we know the first one, obviously, was Eve. And uh, she fell a little short. We'd we'll give her a break. <laughs> but, but I'm just going to mention a few women of God that were in the Bible. Okay, so just hang with me. Okay, obviously the first, first most important one is, 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 is Mary. We know Mary to be the mother of Jesus. Uh, here's a little, uh, little snippet of Mary. Uh, you know, Mary was, her birth was an angelic birth through God. God birthed a special seed, and obviously Mary was special. And uh, she continued her support of Christ and and at the cross. You know, she pondered these things. But God, we we honor Mary, we we honor Ruth, the Moabite. Ruth, the Moabite, played a significant role in coming and becoming of Jesus. After her husband died, she followed her mother-in-law in Naomi, uh, she followed him, then she, you know, obviously she met Boaz, and, and then out of that line, you know, came the David line, and then eventually came Christ. So these are other women in the Bible. Uh, we've got uh, Mary Magdalene. You know, God, God used her converter. She was, a, she was the first woman at the tomb. It wasn't a man. She was the one at the tomb. And she, and she is the one that was excited about it and, and then told the apostles about it. But Mary Magdalene was at the tomb. That's the one that Jesus, when he was resurrected and that, and that came out and his angel saw, that was the woman. We have Rachel. Rachel was, you know, Jacob's wife. And out of, Rachel came, two children, Esau, Jacob. Jacob to become, later on, Israel, the tribe of Israel. The Hebrews came out of that. So there's that lineage. And we have Deborah. Deborah was one of the female judges. Uh, ben, you, you spoke on her not too long ago, where she, she, she mustered up and, and gave the support where a man couldn't stand and fight the battle. Deborah stepped up and did it. You know, once again, another, Esther. And we know the story of Esther, how great she was, and how God used her and positioned her to, to save her people for a time such as this. We have Miriam. Abraham's sister. We have obviously Sarah, Abraham's wife. Out of, out of that came obviously Isaac. Out of Isaac, we know the lineage. We have Elizabeth, the mother of uh, John the Baptist, a, pre, a, precursor, a precursor for the calling of Jesus Christ, Elizabeth. And we have so many more. We have Priscilla and Aquila that assisted Apostle Paul throughout his travels and out his ministry. And that's what I really do love about Apostle Paul. You know, he, he was very adamant of, of, of pointing out people, not only men, but women, that just supported him and had a significant difference and helped his ministry. So, Lord, we just thank you for these wonderful women that you have. We have Martha, another one in the, in the Bible, Josephus, but one that, that was mentioned that I, that, that's not in there was Sephora. She was the wife of Moses. And if we recall, she actually ended up saving Moses' life because as Moses, as God had called Moses to go and set his people free, there was was some circumcision that didn't take place. God was going to strike down Moses, the man he called. But Sephora, smartly enough, went in and circumcised her son, touched the foreskin against Moses, and that satisfied and pleased God. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for these wonderful women and continue, God, uh, blessing women and their struggle for equality. 
uh, God, their, their, their place in history, God, what they do on a normal basis for us. If you look at any kind of household, I, I mean, let's just face it. The woman's, the woman's running the house. Let's just face it. She's the one getting stuff in order. She's keeping things flowing. And we try to help them out. Be a better helpmate to the wife. <laughs> okay? So in all that, Lord, I just want to thank you because I did. It laid it upon my heart to recognize women. That wonderful, special, beautiful, lovely woman that God had created. Now, I'm going to start the other part of my sermon. So hopefully, that reflects something. So, uh, you put the first slide up here. As it comes up, okay. This is something that kind of pondered God laid on my heart, and will always be on my heart. Is that... There's so many people today in this culture, in this society, that have turned away from God. You, you look at the statistics. Uh, you can Google them yourself. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a group of people called the Pew, and they, they, are, they're, they're, they, ha- they have no twist on it. They just do some, some surveying. And the number of people that have turned away are great, first, folks. And... and uh, it's a deep concern not only to me, but more than anything, it's a deep concern to God. You know, God is still available. God's still calling. So, so in this, if you look at my little circular map, because there's a lot of data on it, uh, but we're falling away. It says in the late 2010s, 71% is only in the church. In the 1990s, it was 90%. 90%, folks. Now we're down to 71%, and the numbers keep dwindling. What's our part in this? That we continue to follow after God. We continue to turn the trend. We can make a difference, folks, out here with these numbers. Do it in your, do it in your home. Do it with your family. Do it with whoever or whomever God puts in your path. And I say how to do that is you let the Holy Spirit minister to you. What people don't need is someone to hit them with a, with a, sledge, a holy sledgehammer. They want, to, they want to be talked to where they're at, and you just, you just give them a little bit of God. You give them a little bit of love. You listen, first of all, find out who they are, where they're at, and see that they may be struggling, but you know what? Don't be afraid to let speak into someone's life. Don't be afraid because God has given us, each and, any, each and every one of us, his gift and his spirit. Every... You see, Pastor Ben, you see me. I'm no different. We're no different from any of you. When God lays something on your heart for a brother, for a sister, or even a stranger, just go up, give a little bit of love. Give them a little bit of God because you don't know what seed you're planting. So here's the a, here's a scripture, 2 Timothy uh, 3, verse 3 through 5. But understand this, that in the days, in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people. This generation will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying his power. Avoid such people. That's your challenge, folks. This is our challenge of brothers and sisters in Christ. It's it's, it's fine to come in here and get your lantern filled and get your spirit filled. But if you know our sign, it says, go beyond these outer walls. That's what we're called to do. We're not about this feel-good situation where we come in. and, And look, this is beautiful. Because this is where God regenerates us. This is beautiful where God fills our tabernacle and our spirit and gives us direction, gives us leadership, gives us power, gives us our authority. But then you know what he wants you to do? He doesn't want you to just go out there in the workplace, go out wherever God takes you, and spread the great news, the greatest news ever, the gospel, that God still loves these people. They're not unreachable. I was unreachable at one time. But God reached down. He never gave up on me. That's my, that's my challenge for you. Okay, next slide. <laughs> I've kind of put this one up here because I, 
this is what's going on a lot. People, people are walking around the blind, leading the blind. Face it, if, if you don't have Christ, and you don't have a direct direction of where you're going and what God purposed you for, you're just, you're just walking. You're a zombie. You don't know where you're going. And you know what? The materialism of this world will keep you walking blind. We live in a society today where people got iPods on, cell phones in their hands, computers in their laptop, and don't know their own children. Don't know their own children. Don't even know their own husband. Caught up in this technology because you know why? Because we bind you, Satan. We don't need any of that. God overrides all that through his Holy Spirit and his infallible word and the cross of Jesus Christ. But I challenge you today, don't get caught up in this stuff. With your phones. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. Because you're going to lose sight of Jesus Christ. Where he wants to take you, what he's going to do to you. Example A. When God brought, delivered the Hebrews out of their bondage. He explicitly told them, I'm going to give you a lamb flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to give you vineyards you didn't plant. I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. A matter of fact, you are going to be blessed when you leave Egypt because you know what? They were given all the material. God gave them favor. They took all their materials. They took gold. They took silver. And what, you know, what they didn't take with them was the fault of God because they were a blind nation. What ended up happening is God professed to them that be careful with all these things I do for you, how I bless you, how your women will, will, will birth children, how you will continue to be blessed. But you know what? They turned, they turned anyway. They turned away from following God. And now you look at the outcome. We know the outcome, what happened. He sent people, and he had prophets crying to him, telling them their direction, telling them where to go. But just like this, folks, the materialism of this world will guide you away from God. If God's if spirit is in, on you, and if you're not staying in his, in, 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 in his spirit, in his realm, and what you do, you will be easily pulled off guard. You'll go on the wide road. There's a narrow road that leads to Jesus Christ, God Almighty. And if you're not walking that road, then don't, fool, don't be fooled because you know what? You're falling off the cliff. You're going nowhere. So here's some of the, here's one of the, uh, a few things that I've, scriptures I've read. Uh, we'll read up here. John 3, 63. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send Send his son to the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him in him is not judged. He who does not believe in him oh, has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Luke 15, 4. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them and doesn't leave and, and doesn't, leaves them and doesn't, then leave, he'll leave the 99 in the open country to go to... So God, look, he, he's got us. We want to go get that, that one sheep out there. That's what's telling me. And there's always a sheep. God's always talking to you. God's always ministering to you. Um, here it is, another one. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And, and that's really where the lost are. A lot of, a lot of the lost are right there. They're, they're, they're the ones falling off the cliff. Listen, you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to ever get to what God's intentions if you if you don't identify yourself with Christ, you're not walking with Christ and you don't believe because the things of this world are going to destroy you. And of course you know why? Because there's you get yourself a car, these people are chasing things. You get a car, okay, it's nice, shiny, whatever. But after a while that gets all messed, you know what, it becomes normal to you. What's the next thing? There's only one thing that will really give you complete. You're incomplete until you find Christ. And the word of God, you're just incomplete. You're going to search all over for this, all over for that, thinking a new wardrobe, getting Botox, whatever. You know, those things don't, you know, those aren't the things of God, but that's where we're at. We're over inundated with stuff, folks. We're over inundated. We got we to gotta struggle and battle every day to take control of our senses. Lord, help us. You find yourself, note to self, you find yourself drifting away. Turn back, say, oh, Lord, forgive me. I, 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 just, I just got a little off-road there, and 
I might have said something to a brother. I might have said something to a sister. Someone driving in front of me. Let me refocus from center and to you, Lord, and to your spirit. That's what I have to do on a daily basis. That's what you've got to do. You, you've got to stoke the spirit of God in you every day. So let's just flip again. Next one. Okay, this is what came to my mind. Christ is our compass. One of the greatest uh, innovations and well, little instruments that ever made was the compass. They say that uh, sometime in the 1200 BC, uh, 1200, whatever, the, the Chinese, the Greeks have these kind of like we're, we're, we're working with it, but the Chinese kind of, they attribute them uh, to actually making the compass. Okay, and basically the compass says, you know, the earth is God's and all the glory there in it. So the, the God, through the physics of the earth, has this, this magnetism, right? That's how a compass works, so magnetism. And it has a pointer, it has a north, it has a south, it has east and west. A lot of times in the past, they would use stars to navigate. All right, so what would happen if it got cloudy? <laughs> well, they couldn't see much, could they? <laughs> so God made them a compass. People got this compass, okay? So, so with the compass, <coughs> the, and here's the ironic thing about this compass when I, I was, was doing some research. The Chinese, they didn't even use it. For, they were using it for divination, evil things. That's what they thought this compass could find them, golds and riches. No, that's, no, no. That's not really... That was a navigational tool and that saved many lives. But listen, we have a compass. Our compass is Jesus Christ in the Word of God. It's the Holy Spirit. If you look at that, that cross right there, it represents a compass. North, east, west, south. And Jesus is right there, baby. He intersects them all. He's pointing you. He's pointing every one of us today which way to go. He gives us direction. Right now, you're in the right place at the right time because your compass is right. Amen. Now, that we keep some rules to keep your compass right, okay? Some rules for us. So God can continue to lead us and guide us and start with yourself. Here's my routine. First thing I get up. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, just thank you this morning. God, forgive me fresh breath. Thank you for the air that I breathe. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are, the roof over my head. God, I want to meet with you. I want your spirit to fill me today that I am productive for you, that, Lord, I can be about your business. Then I get on my YouTube. I click it on. I put on Charles Stanley, my devotion for today. And he'll come through, do 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 nice Charles Stanley, and he'll give you something. He'll give you something. So while I'm doing my, because my back hurts, Yes, it does, but it ain't stopping me. So I get on there and I have to do my stretches. So while I'm doing my little half-hour stretch routine, I'm listening to the Word of God. This is what, folks, keeps your compass and keeps you in tune with God. We have to do this. It doesn't happen by osmosis. We have to dedicate our mind on the things of the Lord. And it starts with the first breath. Start with prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. For today, I don't know what it has in store, but God, I want to be used by you for your purpose, for your glory. And I do this throughout my day. And even when you're driving, you could, you could listen to whatever, what, spend time when the Lord, read his word. Folks, this is your compass. If this is your compass, it's going to lead you and guide you. Because people, people need it. You need direction. This is perfected. God's word, his path is perfected. And even when God guides you, sometimes God will take you to a place you had no idea you want. Sometimes you battle against, I don't even want to go there. But you know what? God is putting you in a place for a position, for a reason to minister. Just like these activities that are taken around in our community. You may struggle with yourself. Go to them. God's going to do something in it. God's going to do something through it where you're going to be blessed. You can bless somebody else. So just just things that we need to do. Prepare yourself. Keep your compass needle pointing north to Jesus Christ and his direction. Not unto yourself. Have a repentant heart. 
Listen, we're all got problems. Don't, don't get some ideal that, you know what, I got issues and you know what I try to do. And the first thing you want to do is when some seed or some thought comes in your spirit that's not right, rebuke it. If it ain't of the Lord, do not let it take a seed because you know what to do? And it'll affect your day, it'll affect your attitude, and it will affect your ministry. What would God wants to do in you and through you that day. So here's, here's another one. I'll read this, this, one of the scriptures off of this with the compass. John 14, verses 5 to Jesus is, is the only way to the Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Matthew 28, 16, 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go when he saw them. They worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am, what, what's that? I am what? Not with you? I am with you always to the very end of age. Folks, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is pointing us all the time. We all have a compass. These folks that fell off the cliff, that picture, their, their compass is they magnetized. They don't know how to point it. They're not even looking at it. Because a lot of people aren't feeling God. A lot of people, well, the minute God enters you when you feel his spirit, he's going to lead you. He's going to tug on you. He's going to guide you. He's going to point you. So go with that, folks. Uh, Next slide. I thought this was something because God is our compass. God, when, when, when the Hebrews and God, Moses took them out, God led them. With, with a cloud in the day and a fire by night. How awesome! That you didn't got to guess. God said, look, on the cloud this, and it goes, pack the tabernacle up, start the marching, start the following. He, he was with them. How awesome. And at night, at fire, a pearl of fire, the clothes didn't wear out, Right? They ate all that food, that manna they liked. He, he stuffed them with quail, whatever they wanted. He gave them the water. But they were also disobedient. But God was in the flesh there showing up. And this is all part of Christ uh, as we continue to see uh, the, old, the whole Old Testament is pointing to Jesus. Even I, I'm bouncing around, but even back in the garden when Eve was deceived in General, Genesis 3, 15, uh, 3, 15, 16, that God would make a way through his son. It's always pointing to Jesus, folks. That's our compass. Through Christ, he gives us the Holy Spirit to help lead and guide us and give us direction. So here we go. By the, by the day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of fire. It guided them on their way. At night, he led them with a pillar of fire. He gave them light so they could travel by day or night, the pillar of a cloud. That's God's compass in it. He was taking them to lands. There, God knew when, when, they came out, uh, when he brought them out that there was treacherous land. There were nations that were evil that would, would attack them. He even spoke it in his word. He, t- he took them even a different route when he left the Red Sea. Because he knew they weren't prepared. If they went the wrong way, they would have met up against another, uh, one of these other countries. And they would, he said, look, I know what I'm doing. Follow me. Okay, can you go to the next one, please, Caitlin? I, I love this one. Because it, God's infallible word in the compass. So here... There's something I, I didn't say, uh, write this myself. I thought was good. And, and it's, it's very important because you got this Bible, and what does it really mean? Okay? The, the book is inspired. The book is the inspired and fallible Word of God. The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its histories are true. Its prophecies are accurate. And its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe. And practice it to be what? Holy. Because our God is a holy God. It contains light to direct you. Food to support you. It is the traveler's map. The pilgrim's staff. The pilot's compass. 
the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here paradise is restored, heaven open, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is the grand subject. Our good is its design, and the glory of God is its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of what? Pleasure. It has given you new life, will be opened at the judgment, and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and condemns all who trifle with its sacred contents. How wonderful, Lord. How beautiful. How magnificent. There is no excuses. Those folks in the past didn't have this. They didn't have all these things available to them. Folks, God's in this, and, and, and that great commission says he goes to the world. You know why he's saying that? He says, oh, so you're not going to have an excuse when the skies crack open. You're not going to have a, well, I didn't. Know. Yes, you will. I came to you. I gave you the word. We spoke the word. You have to make a choice. Convict your heart in the ways of the Lord, and it will go well. Believe me, I know. <laughs> So here we are now. The next one, please. It's what we are. We're the church. All kinds of colors, all kinds of sizes, all kinds of shapes, every color of the rainbow. That's what the church is about. God ain't looking at color, he ain't looking at status, he ain't looking fat, pretty green, orange, red, gray, whatever you want to be. He's looking at your soul. He come to save your soul. He glacia. A meeting of people called out. Folks, we are the called out ones. Beyond here. That is something, your barometer, you need to check it every day. I'm being called out what? To continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because God is real. He's real to each and every one of us. He intersects our lives every day. That's what the cross is. It's an intersection. Are you going to just... What does he say? If you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, die to yourself, pick, pick that cross up, and follow me. Die to yourself. Because you know what? Self is, the self is sinful. Self is fleshly. So you've got to die to it. Resurrection through birth, through baptism. That's why he says, if you're going to come to me, you've got to be baptized. The old Moisel, that sinful nature was out there in the world doing a whole bunch of crazy things and bad things he shouldn't be doing. I had to die to him. And I thank God for that. So what is the church? Okay. I'm going to do Matthew. I'm going to read a few scriptures here because that's what God has for us. And he has for me to proclaim it today. Matthew 16, 8. You are Peter, a stone, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. And ultimately, when the church actually, we say, kind of came together, was in Acts 2, 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together, like us. We're all together, right here now, Jesus. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. Lord, that's what I want in this church. That's what we need in this church, the filling of your spirit. Then things will happen, Lord. Things can move upon lives. We can save lives. We can save the hurting people, the people that don't know you yet, the people who weren't taught about you. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Lord, give me a tongue that speaks your word. Give me a holy, holy tongue. Not a Moisel tongue, but a tongue of God that would speak to your people in these days. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. As the Spirit enabled them, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation, from every... When they heard the sound of the crowd coming together in bewilderment, because each one heard these speaking in their own language, uttered amaze. They asked, aren't all, all these speaking Galileans? And how is that each of you? But basically what's saying this, folks, is this was, this, this was the Mecca 
of, of life. You had all, all different people from all different countries. This was the manifesto of God saying, look, I got all the world people from different countries and different nations. I'm showing up. I'm going to show you. I got, this is what the church is now. I'm speaking to you in your language. So you know what? You understand it. It ain't jibble jabble. You understand what these guys said, what these disciples said. This empowered them. It is the same power then that it is today that is still alive that God has had in each and every one of us. It's for you too. Each and every one of us. Ephesians. Now you are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family. This is a family thing. We are family. Oh, yeah. God's got it. We're God's family. You got it? We're God's family. So one, love one another. And our, and our congregation and out of here. Oh, I got that. <laughs> Don't you know yourselves, and also, don't you know yourselves are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in your midst? We are the spirit of God. We are a holy temple unto ourselves. Yes, we are. He walks in with us. We are a temple. Take care of your body. Eat healthy. Don't be, don't, don't, don't get yourself, I, this is just a word, speaking to myself, I have a sweet thing. Don't get yourself going down the path where you're always eating the cookies. Eat some fruits. Eat some apples and eat some veggies. And all you out here, drink some water. Got to keep that vessel clean. Keep that vessel up. And you young guys, you may be able to get away with it now, but when you get like me, you'll appreciate it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. And, and, and obviously there's this last, the next slide. We're coming upon the greatest event that took place. The greatest compass in Jesus Christ's life, he knew where he had to go. He knew his direction. He showed his humanity in the Mount of Olives. He prayed three times about this. It was the human side of him. But he knew from the beginning where he, what, what God had made him for and what God had created him for and God's purpose. Guess what? All of us aren't worthy of that. He's the holy lamb of God. In the Old Testament, there was the Passover lamb that passed over them when, when God came to strike them down in Egypt, when the Pharaoh, the very last plague, that God set them free from the bondage from Egypt. Well, Christ atoned for all of our sins. He's atoning for the past. He's atoned for the present. He's atoning for the future. He is the perfect lamb. One and done. I don't know about you folks. I couldn't have lived back. I don't know how they did it in the Old Testament. If you read, I read that Old Testament, the Deuteronomy, you, you do this, you do that, you got to get a, a pigeon, you better get a calf, you better get a ram. Don't, don't wear the wool with the cotton. Oh, Lord. I'd be, at the, I'd be at the altar priest. Here's all my animals. I need one every day. Because I couldn't do it. Thank God. None of us could. Read that Old Testament. Goodness gracious, all the rules. I couldn't do it. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you made a way that was so easy. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. So easy for each and every one of us. So we're getting ready to come up upon this Passion Week that God would lay down his life. He would send his son to lay down his life for us, to atone for us. So let's just read a few scriptures in closing. Matthew 16, 4. Then Jesus told the disciples, if anyone would come after me, I said that. Let's go to John 1, 29. The next day, he saw Jesus coming towards him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This was John speaking to God, speaking to Jesus. So he's ready to baptize him. Ready to baptize him. Five, Re Revelations 5, 12. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We were purchased, folks. That's purchased. What a ransom. 
John 10, 1, 7 to 18. For this reason the Father loves me because I laid down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up. This charge I received from my Father. So in closing, I pray that, that the Holy Spirit, that God spoke to some of you out there, so, the one of you just does something, to motivate you to Jesus Christ, to motivate you to help some of those folks that are lost. That's our greatest thing. Go out there into the world to help those that are lost and do it out of love, kindness. God, God will use you. Believe me, he, he's using you all in some degree now. I know each and every one of you. I know God has spoken into your life. I know God has blessed you. I know God is blessing you. I know God is, is for you. But continue, continue. The greatest cause ever as a believer is to continue to profess the good news of Jesus Christ. The greatest news ever. Not CNN, not anything else, but the news of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I'm going to close in prayer. So, Lord, I'm going to pray right now and say, thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your infallible word. Thank you for pointing a way to me. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and directs me. I thank you, Lord, for this congregation today, Lord. Those that are here, those that are not present. Lord, that something spoken through me today would have been of you, God, through your Holy Spirit, that would give them a reflection, a revelation, a challenge. To go beyond these walls, Lord, because you are my priest and high priest. You are my disciples. And everything you do, we do it through the will of the Lord. Don't take any credit to yourself, God. All the glory and all the credit that ever comes out of any of this that's for souls, God, is you. You deserve all the credit. You deserve all the glory. God, I ask that you empower each and every soul here today. That, God, that they would energize their spirit every morning that they would point to Christ, that they would bow at the knee, and then they would go forth into the world and to their environment and profess the greatest thing ever given, the Son of Jesus Christ and the Word of God, that they can be changed and resurrected and start the greatest, most wonderful relationship they'll ever experience is the love of God because He loves us that much and He's calling you. So Lord, I thank you today for each one that gave me this opportunity to, to preach and give you something that God has laid on my heart. I pray that it's falling on fertile ground. And God, that you will continue to water it. God, would you would continue to grow it. And that you will become a producing tree, a fruit tree that could feed those that are lost and hungry. God, a light unto our feet. So I pray for the other events that are going to take place today, Lord. I pray for our congregation. I pray for the trainee, those who are signed up. God, bless the food we're about ready to eat. Bless the gentleman, whoever's going to give this. Bless this Miss Ekman. God, you be glorified in us. And I just pray this in the precious, holiest, glorious name of our Son, your Son, our Son, our Savior, our High Priest, our Atonement. Jesus Christ, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And, and he meant everything he said. <laughs> uh, folks, to love God and Christ, first and greatest commandment. Amen. We honor him best by uh, doing it his way. Amen. I hope everyone here today is surrendered unto Christ. Amen. If you have surrendered your life, but you've not been identified with him in the waters of baptism, love to help you out. Just talk to me. All righty. But uh, amen. Love God with all of your heart. And then love others, Moist let us know today and reminded us very beautifully. But especially, gentlemen, we're going to love the ladies. <laughs> amen. So you are dismissed in Jesus' name. Those of you who have signed up, Please head towards the fellowship hall. All righty? And we'll meet you there. God bless you all.